Okay. So here I so, think we have presented the uh, raw material inventory analysis for two two of the blanks, right? Blank 001 and blank 0011. Just to see whether that smoothing um, is occurring or not. So you can see basically that the production the amount, number of blanks issued for production is the blue line. You can see basically the other line is smoothened out, right? Looks like I smoothened it out. But yes, if you look, yeah, this is the, it seems to be that much smooth. I mean, of course, some smoothing has happened. Yes. It is a really interesting slide, actually. Um, maybe I can talk about it, uh, William. Sure, please. Yeah, so so here we are talking about the raw, uh, if you look at the chart on the right side, I mean, let's ignore the left one for a minute because that is only for a BS4 blank. But if you look at the, the right one, which is used uh, in BS4 and BS6 product, you see the, the blue line which shows the production issue, which means, how much of that blank is actually being used to be given to the shop floor to produce the gear, right? Every month, and depending on the amount of production of the gear, we will be issuing different quantities of blanks to the shop floor to start making these gear gears, right? So that's a blue line. So you can see there's a lot of fluctuation in the blue line, right? Uh, the, the production issues is very high in May 19, and then it starts going down. And then it again goes up, again goes down, then goes up and so on. So a lot of fluctuation in that. The order quantity is how much are we ordering with our supplier? And then the order quantity you see is only one of three possible values in this chart is there. Either uh, the quantity is zero or it's 8,000, around 8,000, which is our reorder uh, uh, re quantity, or it's 16,000 because in some months we place two orders. Uh, if, if in some months there is very high production because every day we are monitoring the inventory and we place an order whenever it goes below the reorder point, right? In some months, it doesn't happen at all. The consumption is so low that the inventories of the blank stay above the reorder point. Like September 2019 is an example where you see there was no orders because our, our production was quite low. Uh, and so we never fell below the reorder point. In some months, we fall below the reorder point on one day of the month, maybe on the 10th or 15th or 20th. Example is March uh, to May, right? On May 2019, you see there's 8,000 units. Because at one point in the month, it fell below the reorder point. We immediately placed an order of 8,000 units because that's our reorder quantity, right? The reorder quantity is always the same number of units you order every time is 8,000. There are some months where there's very high production issue. That means the activity in production is very high. The material is being consumed very fast, rapidly, right? Example in this case is uh, where you're showing uh, in July uh, or June 2019, right? Uh, where the blue line is very high, in June and July 2019. That means on the on maybe the fifth of the month, it it crossed the reorder point once. It fell below the reorder point. Immediately, we placed our order for 8,000. And then by the time the product arrived, it again has crossed reorder point in another point in the month. So two orders were placed. So totally 16,000 wow. were ordered in that month. That's the explanation for 16,000. I see. Okay. Yeah. So you two see crossings. zero eight thousand. It's two crossings of the reorder point. Yes. Yes. Technically, it's even possible to happen many times. If the production issues were very, very high, you could reorder three days, three particular times in a month, you could cross the reorder point. That's also possible. But in our example, it doesn't happen. In that case, order quantity would have been 24,000 and so on, right? So that's what this chart is showing. So it's a very interesting way to see this activity. And then we try to map, therefore, the ending inventory, uh, you know, based on uh, production issue versus order quantity, uh, we try to map the ending inventory. And uh, that is also quite interesting. What struck me as interesting, uh, Shiv, is for blank 01, there seems to be something left in the warehouse uh, forever. Huh? Uh, even though we know we are never going to need that because BS4 has gone out of production. Yes, you're very right. I think they have 
they have not been they have, they have left with a small number of units that they are not able to process further. They had ordered it, but by then the BS um, six transition happened. BS four was stopped, and so some units like uh, were left in the warehouse, and they haven't done anything with it. Right? They should have ideally sold it as scrap or sold it for the metal cost or whatever, but. They have just let let it lie in the system because it doesn't have much value, and that's what you see the 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 inventory. There's no issue, no production issue because you can't make it anymore. The zero in the blue line, but the orange line, there's a small quantity left. So this is the kind of the losses the industry suffered when the BS4 transition to BS6 happened, right? A number of vehicles could not actually be sold. The Supreme Court ordered that no sales can happen uh, uh, after April 1st. So some manufacturers were stuck with some vehicles that they could not sell, and then uh, COVID hit at the end of March. It actually the lockdowns happened say ten days before March thirty first. So then finally the court came back and said you can sell ten days worth of sales, right? Uh, but you cannot sell anymore. So even after April first, they were finally given an allowance for the lockdown of ten days by saying. You can sell a small quantity of your leftover cars, but even then they were stuck with some quantity which the dealers then kind of uh, you know bought into their own books on 31st March, and then they tried to sell it as and they registered into their own uh, into their own books, and then they tried to sell it as second sales and so on. So a lot of everybody in the chain had some losses on account of the transition, uh, but in the end. You know, we we then got much cleaner cars, as we saw in the earlier part of the case study, right? Uh, much fewer emissions. So overall, it's been great for the country and the environment and, and the air we breathe. But there were some losses that the industry suffered. It's also, I think, a consequence of the fact that we're doing this eight thousand unit ordering, right? So if you can only yeah. buy, so the amount left over in the warehouse seems to be like a thousand. So since you could only order it, order seven thousand, you would have zero, I guess. <laughs> but you could yes, not have. Yes. Very good point. Very good point. If they had been more intelligent in uh, in uh, changing that last order, they could have maybe uh, avoided it. Hmm. You want to react on the chart on the right? I mean, there seems to be some inverse correlation between production issue and ending inventory. One curve going down, another curve going up. So exactly yeah. opposite. That's uh, that's uh, that's quite true. Um, you know, you see a couple of different impacts there. So one is the fact that on a month where there is a sudden sharp rise in the production, right? Then our inventories are falling quite low, as you would imagine, right? Because most of the product has been issued. We have placed orders; the orders haven't yet come. So we are going to very low level of inventory in some months, right? The May 2019 and so on. And then there are times when the production drops very fast, right? Before we can change our ordering pattern. Or the orders have been placed, but then the production dropped in September 19 so much. So then you're you're left uh, you're saddled with uh, inventory more than what you ideally want, right? That's what happened in September 19. And the same thing happens in COVID, right? As you see, up after April 2020, May 2020, the production just dropped uh, to zero, and then you're stuck with uh, a high level of ending inventory, uh, and then production picks up very slowly. And slowly, slowly, you're able to consume your inventory uh, with the production. So that's kind of what you see in that right-hand chart. Also very illustrative of the almost inverse effect, like you said, between uh, amount that you need to produce versus how much inventory you you hold. And uh, then we also look at the safety stock uh, shift. Uh, try to compute the safety stock uh, based on the formula that you told us. Uh, uh, and uh, this is the sort of uh, data we 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 tend to we got. Yes, um, this is again very illustrative. I think the, we've covered the concept of the reorder point, the reorder quantity, and the lead time demand and the safety stock. So just to recap very quickly, um, you know the inventory uh, the inventory. Uh, is who keeps going down as we have more and more consumption, right? And then when we hit, uh, uh, it goes below a trigger called reorder point. Uh, so if the inventory is less than the reorder point, we immediately place an order. And the quantity of items we 
order for is the reorder quantity. So whenever, so in the case of blank 0, 1, 1, which is the second line, you can see that whenever inventory goes below 18,766 units, and this is done every day, right? Every day we are looking, the system is looking at what's my inventory, what's versus reorder point. And the day it goes below 18,766, it triggers a purchase order to the supplier to say, give me 7,840 units, which is a reorder quantity. So, so we always order the same quantity in every order, uh, but the day on which we place it is the day we go below the reorder point. And how is the reorder point determined? Why is it 18,766? There is two things that make it up. One is a safety stock, which means what's the difference between my highest cons consuming month and the lowest consuming month? If I look at my whole history, going back like two years or three years, the, there could be months where we almost had no um, consumption. And there could be months where we had 10,000 plus consumption, right? So we want to kind of adjust for that variability. So that's a safety stock. And then the fact that even if you have enough quantity on the safety stock, it takes some time for your product to arrive once you place the order. In our case, we assume it is one month. So the lead time is one month. And the average demand during one month, we look back in the last two, three years, and that is 7,840. So if we add the safety stock, which gives us the buffer for the variability, and we add the lead time demand, which gives us a buffer for the amount of time it will take for product to come back, then we get the reorder point. So what the reorder point gives us is the ability to continue production despite the variations that happen in the, in the amount of production for long enough that we will get our new order in time before we run out of stock. So that's the concept of the reorder point and the reorder quantity. And then the order quantity calculation that shows in every given month, as I said before, either you'll have zero orders or you'll have one order, which is equal to 7,840, or in some months, the consumption is so high that you might have two orders. You can even have three orders, four orders, but in our case study, uh, we have seen only up to two orders in, in these months. So then it's double of 7,840, which is 15,680. So that's the, the whole concept of uh, safety stock, lead time demand, reorder point, and reorder point. So Shiv, I'd like to thank you for uh, taking time off and contributing both your expertise as well as giving us the data set and taking us through the, and you know, educating us. You know, for us, for me also, I have not been in the manufacturing sector. I've learned quite a lot. We're working on the problems that you gave Milan and me to work on. And I think it's been very illustrative. I'm sure the students would have enjoyed watching this uh, session and they, they have at least got a glimpse of what manufacturing looks like, what the data sets look like. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Milan. It's been also very uh, uh, enlightening for me to uh, you know, kind of look at it end to end and look at it in a way that uh, can bring out some of the in insights. So some of your guidance in doing that has been very, very helpful. And I enjoyed uh, uh, the whole exercise. So thanks for the opportunity to uh, uh, IIT Madras and to both of you for that. Thank you.